So we've got quite a few people already in here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll start sharing my screen. I'll kind of go over the five um, key reasons why Visible Body is great for CTE. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, Courtney can and, and Mary can answer them um, as we're going. And then, you know, feel free to interrupt me too um, if you need me to go over anything extra. And um, I just wanted to uh, put in two things before we start. Um, if for any reason you need to um, jump off the call, uh, not to worry, we are recording this and we will be sending the recording tomorrow morning along with uh, any follow-up goodies that uh, crop up during the webinar. And um, if you do have questions and you pop them in the chat, um, be sure to include uh, what your titles are, um, you know, so we can just uh, keep track and give everybody the uh, respect you deserve. So, yes. And if you have any burning questions, feel free to put them in as well. Um, we definitely want to cover uh, what you're looking for today. So, okay. Awesome. So let's get started. I will share my screen. Okay. So can you see my Courseware screen here? Okay, awesome. All right, so there are, what we're gonna go over today are the five main reasons why Visible Body is a perfect match for CTE. So the first one that I wanna go over is, um, we have a lot of um, 3D anatomy and physiology content that can that covers a lot of really in-depth con concepts and you can really find them um, pared down into these tiny little or not small but like more customized views and it's in a bite-sized um, size information for those students so um, what you see here is my courseware page so within courseware you get access to all of our web and mobile apps that we have available um, so here under the my app section you see we have visible body suite so i'm going to spend a lot of time in that today just showing you how we've really pared down on our information to help the students um, really dive into the anatomy and physiology content um, we have biology as well i'll show you a few models in there um, and, you know, if there's anybody who you know who teaches biology and would like to also take a look at our content, you know, please let them know. We're happy to also give them a little bit more in depth of a demonstration for bio. Um, we also have an anatomy and physiology app here. So this is our textbook like app. Um, it's a great way for students to start diving into anatomy and physiology because it takes a look at our AMP content from more of a bird's eye view. Um, it's more guided. Um, and it's just kind of a good way for them to transition from reading something in a textbook and getting more hands-on with anatomy and physiology. Um, we also have our physiology and pathology app. So um, this is where our damaged anatomy lives. We have some animations in here as well. We have a beating heart model with an EKG. So this is great if you have something like a nursing class or even an EMT, EMS class, um, or just if you wanna go into heart conduction a little bit more detail, you can see the um, the heart conduction next to the EKG with different BPMs, all that kind of stuff. So um, I can show you a little bit of that as well. We have a muscle and premium, excuse me, muscle and premium app here. And this is where our musculoskeletal system lives. Um, so it's just our musculoskeletal system pared down. We kind of took out those um, less relative systems. Um, you can see all of that content in there. Um, and then we have our physiology animations right here. This is where all of our animations live. Um, and we have, we cover our topics that are a little bit more con complex um, within these tiny little, you know, 90 second videos um, that are again, bite-sized pieces of information and the students can watch those to kind of help them get started. Um, if you scroll all the way down to Courseware here, we have a few extra mobile downloads. So um, we have our anatomy and physiology mobile app, we have physiology and pathology and muscle premium. So students can actually download these to their mobile devices as well. And just as a quick, quick little look into the future, so what we're doing currently is we are um, putting everything on all of these apps into one main app. So it's going to be like a one-stop shop. Um, and that app would be Visible Body Suite. So you'll see um, if you have Courseware throughout your subscription, if we make updates or changes to the apps, um, those will be reflected in your web and mobile versions. So you can launch any of these apps here on your computer by clicking the blue launch button and it loads the app in a new tab for you here. And then you can uh, interact with the models this way. 
Um, and you can also download the mobile app to your device and students can also do this as well. So they can um, interact with the models on their phones. And if they you know, do anything on their phone, it will also be reflected on the computer and vice versa. So um, I'm going to jump into uh, that, that really complex anatomy that we have in a very tangible way in a minute, but um, I just wanted to check and make sure there aren't any questions about the different types of apps or how to access any of that in here. Awesome. Request to look at some neuroanatomy. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can definitely show that too. Which is great because we just added a whole bunch of neuro microanatomy. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, that neuro microanatomy, um, it, it kind of really does show that those more complex um, problems in a more easy to understand way. So, okay. So, one of the reasons it, uh, that visible body is great for CTE is because we have that anatomy and then also because it's accessible on web and mobile devices. So students can use their content, whether they're in class and they can easily take it away and use it when they're at home because they can use it on their PC or they can use it on their phone. We are also compatible with other touch screen devices. So uh, clear touch, we also are, um, can be used on any smart, board, smart boards or Promethean boards. If you are lucky and you have uh, tablets or um, iPads in your classroom, those can also be used there. So um, it can really be a great way to, for students to collaborate and work with the models in class. Okay. So let me go into Visible body, uh, body Suite here. So this is the web version of our uh, Visible Body Suite. So you can see we have a bunch of preset views in here. Um, we have all the systems in the human body. And within these preset views, you can see that there's some isolated structures. So it makes it easier for students to identify where they want to jump in and start going over um, the different anatomy. Up here at the top, we also have images. So we have some histology slides as well within this app. Um, this is uh, an add-on from the A&P app. So there's some histology in that anatomy and physiology app as well, but they can explore this content in here. We have a, a media section, which is where all of our animations live. So those um, 90 second clips or less um, all live in here and they go over a lot of physiology and pathology content. So students can come in here and learn about those more complex um, concepts right here by watching an animation. Our study tab is where students can save any content. So when they're diving into these models, it's all customizable. They can save any content to um, to either refer to later or to share with a friend. And then they also, we also have our library section where all of our saved views live um, as well. And so mine is not, I just wanted to make sure my saved views was. Okay, so I'm actually gonna switch to my iPad here because there are a few features on here that we can go over. Okay, can you see my iPad now? Awesome. Okay, so you can see it's very similar to um, the web app. It just is on an iPad format. Um, and this is again, something that students can access and you can access through Courseware. So I'm going to jump in to one of my animations here. So let's say uh, we wanted to go over the topic of the musculoskeletal system. Um, it's, there's a lot that goes on with that. There's the, um, the small microanatomy, which is the um, actin and myosin filaments, the contractions. Then there's the whole construction of the muscle and then the origins and insertions, the movement, all of that. So it can be pretty complex, um, but with visible body, you can really kind of narrow it down. So if I come in here, um, you'll see that there's some animations um, that you can watch. So we have the system overview. So we have something like this with muscle tissue types. So um, you can watch any of these animations to help start your learning process. I'll play one for you just for case. About half of the human body's weight is from hundreds of muscles that are responsible for moving structures and internal organs. Muscle tissue throughout the body facilitates body functions by changing shape and length. These contractions cause movements that facilitate body functions. 
So, so students can come in here and watch this overview animation of muscle contractions. You kind of get this really cool visual of the um, of the neuron it's, it's, um, sending a signal into the muscle. And then you can kind of see how the muscles might contract with the smooth muscle or skeletal muscle. So there's quite a few animations in here that they can go and start with. But then after watching an animation to kind of get that uh, physiology down, they can go back into the views and interact with any of the muscles or any of the structures um, here within our models. So let's say we want to dive into my shoulder muscle here. So I can click on any of these muscles. So as you notice, this model is completely interactive. I just use my finger to click and drag. Uh, to rotate the model, and I can use two fingers to pinch and pull to really position the model to where I want it to be. So I can learn about this muscle now by looking up here in my info box in the top right hand corner. So I get a structure name, I get a definition with my textbook icon, and I can already see that there's some information in here about this muscle. So I get a little bit more detail for my origin, my insertion, innervation, action, and blood supply. There are some associated pathologies as well, but there's this little red pin button here. And if I click on that, I can dive into a even more isolated view of this muscle. So this is, um, when you're going over those musculoskeletal systems, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of different features, but isolating it like this can really help students um, visualize and understand a little bit better. You can also add in the blood supply and the innervation. And then you can see it all together here. So if I go back now, so you can see how um, easy it is to kind of narrow down and hone in on those structures. So um, if you notice up here in the related content, there are some views with little uh, triangle play buttons here. And what this is, is this is a muscle action. So if I click on that, you can now see the pectoralis major involved in shoulder flexion here. So after taking a look at the animation, then jumping into my model, learning about where the muscle originates and inserts using my origin and insertion definition and tools, I can jump into a muscle action here and see how it acts. One other uh, feature that we have where you can dive even further into um, that anatomy is here under the microanatomy section. So if I click on that, and I scroll down a little bit, oh, I think I might pass it, it's right here. Um, we have the a microanatomy view of the of a skeletal muscle. So kind of like in that animation where we saw um, the uh, nerves kind of coming down into the, the, the muscle, you can dive in a little bit further here and see where um, the filaments might be within this, uh, the skeletal muscle. This is all interactive. Um, so I can select any of these structures here to learn a little bit more about them. We still have those definitions and how they might play a role um, in uh, muscle contraction. Okay. Right, so if I go back here to my menu, since we're here and we did get a request to see some of our neuroanatomy, so we have the entire nervous system that you can view at a more of a gross scale. But here we do have our microanatomy for the nervous system. So we have a really cool vertebral column microanatomy model. Desiree, yes. somebody asked for just some detail about how you manipulate, excuse me, about how you're manipulating the model. That's from Claudine Weiner. Oh, sure. So I'm using my iPad here and just with one finger, you can kind of see my uh, the little blue circle is where my finger is. With one finger, I just tap and pull, and it rotates the model. And then with two fingers, if I do this and I uh, I move side to side, I can pan the model across my screen. And if I pinch and pull out or pinch and pull in, it makes the model big, bigger and smaller. It's a similar thing on the computer. It's just one click and a drag to rotate, a right click to pan. Um, and then you can use your pinwheel to scroll in and out or your trackpad to scroll in and out. 
And within Courseware, we provide resources to help you and your students get started. So one of the things that we have is a tutorial for this program, Visible Body Suite, that is a document that walks students through kind of all the steps of the basic functionality of the program <clears throat> with an assignment at the end that has them kind of go through and click on different things and answer questions. So that for faculty that start utilizing our content, and have students coming in, you're not necessarily responsible for figuring out how to teach your students how to use the content. We provide those resources for you within Courseware. We also can provide that as a different delivery tool if you end up utilizing a site license for just the apps, which is some another way that we sell. So we have Courseware, which is a learning platform, or you your institution can purchase access just to the resources. Perfect. Yeah, thank you, Mary. That's a great point. Thank you. And Claudine asked about the models being dissectable. Mm -hmm. um, so the microanatomy models are not necessarily dissectable because of the way that they're built. One of the things about our content is that um, our the people who put together these materials, they're specialists. So they're anatomists and they're art artists, but they're also very involved in the educational process and how these models are going to be used to teach. So in most of our models, you do have the ability to dissect away content. In these microanatomy models, the one that Desiree is showing right now, it doesn't have the dissection functionality because typically this is designed in a way that it kind of has it set up. The, the layers of complication for making this model dissectable would make it a lot harder for us to put this out and not necessary. Whereas in other models, for example, in muscular digestive other system views, you do have dissection capabilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think there was one more question too about um, just tutorials. Um, and just to reiterate what Mary says, uh, we have a great customer engagement team. Mary is part of that team. Um, and they can make sure that you know how to use the content, make sure you know how to make an assignment in Courseware. And we are here to help you throughout the whole process, throughout the whole year. So um, don't worry about, you know, if you think you're going to get stranded, we're here to help. Don't feel free to reach out at any point. Um, we also have a very robust uh, support site that um, has tons of tutorials and will walk you through um, everything if you wanted to uh, give it a try on your own, if you um, set up a, a, a trial. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to link to that in tomorrow's follow-up email. So. Mm -hmm. And one more comment and then we'll let Desiree get back. We have another colleague who's on the call who pointed out the movement that Desiree is experiencing face-to-face -face is very fluid and very seamless. It's a little jumpy because of the Zoom interface. Mm -hmm. But for those of you that are following along at home, um, Claudine, you mentioned that you're practicing along. You're seeing a much more smooth rotation and navigation. The Zoom kind of makes it a little bit chunky. Claudine, mm -hmm. you asked about the hide feature. You can... Um, undo, you can just click on the hide button again, or you can use the little arrow that's on the right-hand side to undo your last step, which Desiree can show you here as well. So we're getting some questions coming. And then Paul Wagner, when you get to it, Desiree asked about showing augmented reality function for movement. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That was actually read my mind because that's one of the things I was going to show today. So that's great. Um, yes. So to unhide, you just click the hide button again. The, there's an undo button here as well that you can use. Um, and while we're in here talking about hiding and hiding and you know dissecting or hiding and unhiding and dissecting, um, you can use the dissect tool, which is down here on the bottom. If you click on that, you can quickly remove structures to dissect a view. So if you wanted to use my systems tray here to add on even more anatomy, I can now quickly click and remove structures to kind of create a view. Um, to answer the question about augmented reality, I'll just jump right into that. So you can put any of the models that we have into AR. It's very simple. You just go into a view and you'll notice that, if I move my model, there is a little AR button down here on the bottom left. So if I click on that, it's going to switch to a camera view. And then it's going to look for a surface. And when it finds a surface, a little yellow box will appear. And then I just tap on that yellow box. And it puts the model into augmented reality. So now it's in my space here in my 
little living room and I can move my iPad around. It's not, it's not a hologram, so it doesn't actually like sit right in front of me, but I can see it on my iPad here. Um, and I can move my iPad around like this and interact with the model in the same way. So I can still use my dissect tool. I can still select my structures. I can get more information. Um, I can even isolate something right within augmented reality. So if I go right into the bony landmarks for the sternum here, I could kind of take a quick look at that. I could take a look at the muscle attachments for the sternum. And if I don't shake too much, I can tap on my origin pin there and just add on the muscle that attaches right to that, to the bone. So you can do this without augmented reality, but it's kind of a fun and interactive way to get moving um, or interact with the models. Um, since we asked about the movement piece, here's an example. So if I select a structure right here, I can go back to my related content and I'll click on a muscle action. So here is my model doing uh, shoulder abduction and augmented reality. It's just as easy as launching a, um, a muscle action view and putting it into AR. But with augmented reality, you can see that there's you know, a, a, something behind my model. And what you can do is because you can scale this to size, you can, um, you can do super imposing activities. And this can become really um, fun and, educa uh, excuse, and educational for um, the CTE courses, especially since you're being, you have to be so hands-on and be ready to go into the fields, you know, so shortly after graduation. Um, so what you could do is put that muscle action into AR and then have somebody stand behind it and then have them uh, mimic you and kind of do this movement activity with you. So um, you can kind of get a better visual of how the muscles actually working, where their muscles might be, um, you know, if you're trying to understand uh, location and, um, you know, anatomical relevance. Um, but you can do more than just the muscle actions with that. If you put on the digestive system and you're learning where to palpate different organs in the quadrants of the abdomen, you can put this on and maybe get a better visual and make sure that you're palpating the liver and not the spleen on the other side of the body. Or you could put the heart on uh, in a augmented reality and um, add little labels to the different valves or chambers of the heart. And then you can, you know, learn where to put the stethoscope to listen to each chamber or different lobes of the lungs and things like that. If you are, uh, I th I've heard of some athletic training um, uh, CTE courses. If you're doing athletic training, this is kind of a great way to help students visualize, um, you know, either taping or reinforcement of joints uh, and ligaments. So you can put the uh, skeletal system over a joint so you might understand better where the ligaments might be. Uh, a couple of examples of that is taping an ankle. So I was, I had an AT internship when I was in college and I always got my heel locks in which direction mixed up. I, if I had understood maybe the direction where the ligaments were going, I could better um, remember how to reinforce that ligament um, in a, uh, a taping. And another thing too that you can do, um, this is an example of the ACL. So this is just a picture. I have this saved model in the app, but I used my draw tool here in 3D to show the directional um, forces that would have, you know, usually take place in order to tear an ACL injury. And if you wanted, you could even um, superimpose that onto somebody to get an idea of where maybe where their kneecap is sitting or, you know, um, anything else that you might want to take a look at related to injuries. Okay. Um, so, okay, so no more questions, no, no other questions, right? I'm not missing anything about that. Okay, awesome. All right, a few more tools that can be great for students um, to uh, use to help them learn are our uh, flashcards. So we have a bunch of pre-made flashcard decks online that students can download off of the internet. You can also download them for the students to use them in class. Um, but they can also create their own flashcard decks to help them study. So uh, like you can see here, there's a vast amount of anatomy and physiology content. They have to learn this content so fast because they have to go right into the workforce afterwards. Um, so having these 3D flashcard tool uh, decks where they can interact with the model, but then also study within the same platform, um, it just really helps them conceptualize and it helps the information stick. So um, I'll kind of give you an example of what a flashcard deck looks like. Um, just to get an idea of how they'd be able to use it. So I have a little flashcard deck down here. There's only three, so you don't have to watch me take a 20 deck flash, a 20 card flashcard deck. Um, but the students will get a deck like this. So this is one that I made 
you'll notice that there's some labels. I wrote wrote something on it as a, a note. And then if you just tap on the screen, it flips the card over so students can see the structure names. I used an auto label tool. So um, it automatically labeled the structure name for me right here, but you can also write your own structure name in um, when you're creating your flashcard deck. If you don't remember the answer to the flashcard deck before you flip the, um, before you flip it over, you can click on explore in 3D here. So I can go back and interact with the exact view that I have in my deck um, and I can double check. Maybe I want to click on my atrium here and I want to read a little bit about it to make sure I really understand it. Um, and then when I'm all set with double checking my learning, I can return back to my flashcard deck and I can either, either give myself a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So it keeps track of my progress. So let's say I didn't get this one and let's say I, I got this one. So at the end, it gives me a score. So I know, okay, I know most of this content. I'm gonna need to come back and review it. And I can just say, I'm done. And you notice right here, there's a little progress bar at the top of this flashcard deck. So students can go um, and see how much they need to continue to study before they've mastered maybe a concept. Um, and we can go over this a little bit in Courseware, but this is a great activity that you can have your students do. So if you're trying to have them understand a certain set of structures or a certain uh, physiology or even a pathology, you could assign them a flashcard deck um, assignment and they would have to go in uh, and use the views to create those flashcard decks and then uh, flashcards and they compile it into a deck. And just a reminder that with Visible Body, the the customer training and support is ongoing and it's free. So you can see at the top of this screen, we have pre-made decks available. You can make your own decks, but you can utilize our decks and then edit them or just use them the way that they are. And then you can work with your trainer. There's five of us that cover um, all of the Visible Body customers and we'll help you kind of from soup to nuts in terms of figuring out what it is that you want to do and providing resources to make it easy. Um, so that you can utilize our content in the way that makes the most sense. So again, and like for me, I have people who I'll meet with one time and we'll do a training and then we do a follow up like two weeks later because then questions come up or we break it out and they work on the course over a number of sessions so that they have the time blocked out in their calendar to get the work done. You know how it is with competing demands. A lot of times it's hard. You're like, oh, I'm going to do this today. And then you don't do it. Working with a visible body trainer helps keep you accountable so that you can get the tasks in visible body courseware and your visible body accounts done the way that you want to. Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And our CE team is great at that too. So um, they check in frequently and make sure that you're doing okay. And we can, um, you know, you're always welcome to reach out to them and whenever you need the help. Um, so one other uh, another feature that we have here um, is a tour. So um, like you can save, you know how you, I was mentioning that you can save views in 3D. Um, you can find all of those views here under the My Library section under your favorites. So as you can see here, I've, sa I've saved quite a few views. Um, here's an example of how I've used our 3D draw tool. So it stays, the drawing stays in the plane when you move um, the model around. I've used a notepad here as a little key. Um, so you can go and create these views, uh, you know, to, to as an instructor to either, you know, give them to your students to study with, or they students can do this as an assignment. Um, but one of the great features about the mobile app, uh, in using it in your class, is the share feature. So um, if you click on this little share link down here on the bottom right, and I click on share link, it's going to give me two ways to share. So I can either share through a hyperlink here, and if I send this link. Uh, my students or my, my friends would be able to access the exact same view with the arrows and everything. And it also pulls up this QR code. So if you have the mobile app downloaded on your device and you scan this QR code, you would actually be able to see my exact view with all my notes and it would pull it up right onto your mobile app. Um, so one of the great things about this is that um, if you have any tangible models or if you have any lab stations that you want to work with, you could isolate a structure and you could pull a QR code out for that. You could print it out, cut it out, and then put it on that anatomical structure so the students can go around and kind of do a little scavenger hunt, um, you know, 
scanning different QR codes for different structures and then pulling it up and having an atlas of information about that structure. Um, it can also help them with practical tests, um, you know, and, and comprehending, you know, from for what for because when you go from a 2D textbook and then you see it in a 3D model, sometimes it can be hard to make that connection. And then adding this extra dimension of scanning the tangible 3D model and seeing it here and being able to add notes, it just really helps them with comprehension. Um, we also have a great blog article about that, and I think Courtney was planning on sending that out too. So uh, it goes over some ideas on how you can kind of use that feature in your lab or even in just class. Okay, and so then the last feature that I will go over um, today in this app here is our tours. So what a tour is, it's a compilation of a bunch of uh, saved 3D views that you've created. So you can create a PowerPoint presentation um, with any of your saved favorites. So for example, here, I've got this little cardio tour. This is a similar view to the one that I just had up, um, but I created this view and then I made it into a tour with a few other uh, 3D views that I've created and saved. So I've kind of made this quick little presentation on the cardiovascular system. Here's a microanatomy model. I kind of dive into my, um, my alveoli here. Um, Maybe I talk about uh, Dalton's law, gas exchange, and how it goes back into the heart. And this is my class. And so I've preset my views, I've pulled it up, and now I'm using my 3D models and interacting with them in class. Um, this is also a great assignment activity. So if you wanted your students to do this, you could give them, um, you know, assign them the topic of creating this story. And maybe they have a little presentation in class, or maybe they work together to create this tour so it becomes a group project so there's lots of different things and again the CE team is um, definitely able to help you uh, come with uh, come up with ideas like that okay yeah. our codes um, from Anna uh, can you use a QR code for the students to take an in-class quiz Looks like Desiree you know, might, Desiree might have frozen. <laughs> Mary, so, take this. The QR codes are not necessarily assignable or they don't bring you to a quiz function. However, what you could do is that you could absolutely utilize um, like a tour um, and set up a bunch of different views that like ask the questions and then have students take them in a different manner. So you definitely could use it in a way um, creatively to, to take students directly to the views that they need. So you could have them do some exploration and answer some questions, not necessarily set up through courseware where you have dissection and multiple choice and short answer quizzing, but you absolutely could be creative. And again, your CE rep could help with kind of the logistics and figuring out how, how to do that. So it's not necessarily something that I've done. I can always tap into my other, um, colleagues, and then we'll also just dig in and help figure things out. I'm so sorry, Zoom just shut down on me. So I got kicked out of the meeting. Thank you for answering that, Mary. I, I don't, I lost the chat history too, so I can't see, but yeah. Okay, well, we're back. So let's go back here now to the screen. So um, the great news about, I know we just spent so much time in Visible Body Suite, but the great news about it is that like barely touched on the information that's in there. So not to overwhelm you, but to excite you um, about all the stuff that you can do with it. And just, there's so many things. Um, okay, so we had, we went over augmented reality and QR codes. We went on the bite-sized piece of information. So uh, a few other things that I want to kind of show you are the uh, extra models that we have available um, in the visible biology. So if you wanted to compare some systems and maybe just show it in another way, um, you can use some of our animal models that we have in bio. Um, and I also just wanted to show you this too, in case you want to spread the word to um, other colleagues. So our visible biology app is right here. So I already have it loaded here, but I just want to show you some of the content in here. I'll, I'll briefly go over it. So in bio, we have a few units, um, or we have, we have the units that you would see uh, in a 
intro level bio course. Um, so we have our animal cell models, we have our plant structure, we have energy unit, so photosynthesis. We have a genetics unit, so you can see and learn how the DNA coils up around, um, coils up into a chromosome. We have blood cells. And then down here at the bottom, we also have animal structure and function. So we have a sea star, an earthworm, a frog, and a pig. Um, so in some CTE classes, um, sometimes you get to dissect uh, uh, an animal. So we had, I, when I took A&P in high school, I had a cat. Um, some schools have pigs. So if you um, are one of the schools that have that, you can use this pig um, in junction with that dissection that you have available. If you are looking for ways to save pigs or to, to stop using the spe specimens, this is a great um, resource. And then if you don't have that resource and you wanted to be able to use some of it, um, this is another great um, option for you. So it's very similar. So what I'm doing now for manipulation is I'm using my mouse. I, I have an external mouse here. I'm just clicking and dragging to rotate right click to pan, and then I use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And then you can select structures here um, and you get the info box up here on the top right-hand corner. So we do have lab activities for biology. We have a pig dissection lab and we have a frog dissection lab, I believe. Um, and then, you know, flashcards and tours and things like that. All the stuff that you would see for the visible body suite and the anatomy physiology content we have for the bio content here. Okay, so um, now to dive into courseware a little bit and how it all works together. So we've been mentioning this throughout the entire webinar, um, but just to reiterate, all of the stuff that's in visible body, um, you know, courseware and the 3D content is customizable. So um, you can use any of our pre-made content and you can edit it or you can create something from scratch. And the great thing about our CE team is that if you have a syllabus, um, we can take your syllabus and create that course for you um, so that, you know, it takes a little bit of work off of your shoulders. Um, but also, uh, if you are new to teaching, um, sometimes we have uh, CT teachers come in from the field and they have a lot of great experience um, and they just need a little bit of help setting up that syllabus and getting into that teaching groove. We are more than happy to help you with that. So um, again, just if you need any help creating that course, send your syllabus over and we can create those assignments and get you trained and everything. Um, if you have a textbook that uh, you would like to use with courseware, we do have textbook correlated courses. A common one is the Marib textbook, Marib textbook, um, depends on how you say it. Um, but we do have this available online. We can also uh, set you up with the course link so you can just add it directly to your account. Um, so with our pre-made courses, you can see in here, I didn't create any of this. This came pre-made. So we have units and folders. And within those units and folders, we have some pre-made assignments. And so you can see we have different types of assignments. We have our lab activities and we have graded quizzes as well. So with Courseware, um, you can link up any preset view or any of those customized views, a tour, a flashcard deck that you've created, anything like that. And you can link it directly here into an assignment. So you can give your students a description. You can tell them you know, what you'd like them to do with your assignment, and then you can give them the views. And if you click on the view, it loads the app, and then it loads that view for you um, in a new tab. So the students don't have to go digging through the app to find it. They can look at exactly what you want them to start uh, exploring. So here's my 3D model of the knee. <laughs> um, if you notice here, I have what looks like a customized view, and it is. So this is just kind of a demonstration of how um, you can link out to your customized views. I got a little error there. Apologize, I'm having those internet issues. It kicked me out of Zoom too. <laughs> um, so it's the same idea with the linking. Um, it's just a pre-made view that I had linked up here. It was a, an example of a third class lever um, and it would link directly into any of that Sage content that you have. Um, okay. Okay, and so then we have uh, other activities as well. Oh. Let's see. 
I'm having those connection issues. It looks like my computer is cr crashed. Um, let's see. Desiree, do you want me to jump in? Yeah, do you happen to have courseware up to just go over the um, dissection quizzes? I'm going to try to fix this. Yep, I do. Hang on, let me just get to the right menu. All right, and then let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm sure none of you ever have technology issues when you're in front of a classroom. So can you guys see my screen here? You can see yeah. my courseware screen. Awesome. So within Visible Body Courseware, as, as uh, Desiree said, we have courses that are all set up and ready to go. One of the things that we recently um, came up with that's new, if you've been working with us for a while, is we have a new really simple essentials of anatomy and physiology that is a really straightforward um, <clears throat> option with very simple assignments that lead to a dissection quiz. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and launch the dissection quiz. So students are able to go in and they're able to then manipulate and take the quiz, sometimes they have to dissect content away. So here you can see I have attempts one out of three. You have the ability to set a lot of different parameters with taking a quiz in terms of if it counts for points, you can set it up where it's a practice quiz. Um, you can have number of attempts, you can have a time limit, you can delay the release. We have a lot of functionality. So here I can rotate this model like I would in the app itself. And here I need to then dissect content away so I can choose this structure to then hide it so that I can then go in and select the structure that I need here. And I'm probably not going to do very well because I don't know brain anatomy very well. But again, the idea here is that students then have to go in and be able to then select the structure. And so they may have to go in kind of deep in order to get to the different um, structures that they need. Also within the um, quiz functionality, you have the ability to set it up so that students here, I'm not getting any feedback as I'm taking this quiz, right? I'm just going through, but you can set it up so that you have it be in a kind of a study mode so that students actually then get the right answer after every question so that they can go through and this itself can be a study tool and you have the ability to then, you know, see what they've done and um, be able to have that studying be something that they get credit for. Mm -hmm. Within Visible Body Courseware, you can see here, I'm in my visible body courseware. Right now I'm in the essentials of anatomy and physiology, which is that course that I was just showing you. But we have a question bank and a quiz bank. We already have so many quizzes that are built. We have multiple choice, short answer and dissection questions. The multiple choice and the dissection questions are graded automatically and flow into a grade book. Currently we have LMS integration and um, we have deep integration with Canvas, which allows GradeSync to go back and go from courseware into Canvas seamlessly. You have the option to turn that on. Um, we have single sign-on with Blackboard, which allows students to be able to click on a link in the left-hand side of the column to be able to get access to your specific course content. And we're currently working on further LMS integrations and hope to have D2L and Moodle and other LMS integrations by the end of 2023. So here, when I select the um, dissection tool, you can see here that this then sorts down and then I'm able to then kind of go shopping for the content that I want. Again, we have courses that are built that already has the content built in so that you don't really even have to do anything, but you have the ability to build and look for your own content as well as edit the existing content that's here. So we'll sort this down even a little bit further into the heart. And so you can see here, we have 61 dissection quizzes that cover the heart. We have a left side and a right side here. So if I come in here and I go into this um, assignment, you can see here blue means that things are chosen. That's kind of turned on. I'm able to very easily review that as an instructor and be like, oh yeah, I really like this quiz. This is something that I want, right? So this right ear one, that's probably not a question. You can see here that we've got some uh, naming conventions that indicate that this quiz has been messed with. You have the ability here, this was the original, um, to then be able to clone a quiz to be able to change it. So if you didn't wanna have this question in there. The other thing too, is that you can also see here that we have the ability to pool questions. So you have a lot of functionality and a lot of flexibility. You can use our preset quiz content or else you can create a no, your own quiz and build from scratch. 
Same thing with our question bank. So we have the ability where you have you can go in and you can actually edit the questions that we already have built, or you can create your own content yourself. So the dissection quizzes are set up in such a way so that those get graded automatically. And as I said, when you create an assignment, so if I go into a course and if I create an assignment, so we'll just come in here and I'm going to create a new assignment. And let's say I choose from the graded quiz bank. This is how courses, how assignments get set up. So you can see I can pull from any one of our resources, but for this purpose, I'm going to pull from a graded quiz bank. You can also upload a file or link out to a URL. So if you have YouTube content that you like to use and want students to use in conjunction with the visible body, you don't have to throw out what you've already been using. It's really easy to be able to kind of merge what you've been doing and improve it with visible body. So here, when I go into this process, I then have the ability to then find the, the resource that I want to assign. And within here, this assignment creation, and again, showing you this for kind of purpose of functionality, not necessarily so you know how to do it. You'd work with your customer engagement specialist as a, in personal training sessions. So here you can see I can delay the release. So I can have a quiz only available for the 45 minutes that students are in class. Um, you have the ability to set up point values or use percentages, unlimited attempts, lots of different settings here. And then, like I mentioned, during the feedback, during the quiz, you can do it after each question so that then that quiz becomes more of a study tool. So that's a little bit about the dissection quizzing. Um, how are you doing, Desiree? Do you want to take back the controls or do you want me to show some more? Tell me where we're at if we have quiz questions in the chat. Um, I did see one that said, um, asking about the teacher view. So how does the teacher view the student work on assignments? Um, and so for right now, uh, the way that you can access or be able to see how the students are doing is if they send you that link back. Um, so after they've completed an assignment, they can send you their assignment link, you know, through that share link. Um, if you wanted to be able to see the student view, Mary was just circling the student preview button that we have available um, in courseware. Yep. So within here I am in Visible Body Suite, which is our great big huge powerhouse. If you have students create tours or assignments that you want to have them submit to you, they're then able to go in and they can then share that tour. Mm -hmm. They can then send you that link. What you would then do in order to check that work is you would go into Visible Body Suite and click on the share link and then paste in that link. And you would then be able to see what the students have submitted. So I have faculty that have had students create flashcards or create tours. And part of the directions include on this first page to like then have, you know, Courtney Smith, period one, that type of thing. So that then you can look at their, their assignments. Mm -hmm. Within Visible Body Courseware, which is the learning platform, you can see here I'm in the instructor view. So I have access to the question bank and the quiz bank. In the upper right hand corner, we have the student preview button that I can then toggle on. And here you can see that I only have a couple of assignments that students are going to see because I've only published a certain amount of content. So when I am able to then you have the ability to then open up this content and you can see here that I've got these green check marks. That means that that publish has been there, that content has been published. But here, when I look at the circulatory system, that has not. So that's where that student preview button shows just what the students are going to see. They're not going to have um, all of the same content over here. Um, it'll be a little bit simpler format, but they do have a calendar and they have course resources and they have their own grade book as well. Um, basically from, and these two are not going to be there and the my apps will be there because students have the ability where they can just go in, launch the app directly, or they can go in through their individual assignments to be able to then access the content and it takes them directly to that content. Um, so how does teacher view student work and um, then forensics? Any other questions or comments right now? Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I'm happy to- Do you want um, Mary, would you like to um, to show the grade book real quick? Oh, sure, great, great idea. So within the grade book, we have <clears throat> content that flows automatically into the grade book. So this is my course 
that has content, that has a grade book that's populated. So I can click into here and you can see here that I then have this very robust grade book that has information about the student efforts. And so here I can come in and I can actually view the details. So I can, if I'm meeting with a student that's having some challenges, I can then look at like their quiz attempts that they spent uh, a really long time here. Um, on it, or if they didn't send any time, I also have the ability where I can then modify the quiz details. So then I can give students an extension on a deadline. I can modify how many attempts that they have. So you have the ability to do that. One other thing that's really nice about Visible Body Courseware is that you also have the ability, if you have students that have um, IEPs or different kind of uh, things that need to help them be more successful. If students need to have more time or no time a quiz accommodation, you have the ability to change that. And then when you change it for the student, it's going to hold for the entire course. So you can go in, you don't have to do a time to quiz accommodation for every quiz that the student takes. Mm -hmm. Going back to the grade book, as I mentioned, we have deep integration for Canvas. So these grades will flow automatically into the Canvas grade book. For Blackboard and other LMSs, we actually have uh, the CSV file already formatted to fit your LMS. So it's a really easy export and then import into your um, LMS gradebook. Yeah. Um, mm, go ahead. We had we had another question about um, recreating course assignments. Uh, year after year, and it's very easy. So all you have to do is go to your courses, and then Amir can show you if you just click on a drop down for any one of the courses, you can just make a copy. And what that does is it copies everything that you have in your course, including the um, deadline interval. So, you know, if it's like every two weeks you had an assignment, it'll keep that just depending on whenever your start date is for your course. Um, and then all of the work that you've done will just be transferred over to the next year. So once you do it once, you're all set. Yeah. <laughs> and then the final piece of what you need to do. So then you make a copy and you can go in. And so say like, I just made this copy of this course. I then have the ability to use this bulk editing tool so that I can go in and I can then set up my due date. So let's say that I want to work on, you know, these are going to have assignment dates. And so they're going to be released, um, you know, in the middle of June, let's say I'm teaching a summer course, and then I can then edit the due date. And so then this is going to then set it up so that those are going to have that set up. I can then publish that content. And now I've been able to change that. So you really have the ability to do a lot of kind of tweaking of the course details, right? If you are teaching a typical 16 week course and you're teaching an eight week course, you can copy it over. And um, by changing that initial due date, it'll get you started. And then using the bulk editing, it makes it easy for you to go in and kind of modify those dates so that it, it matches your calendar exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so Anna asked about cost. Um, so what you can do is reach out to your rep. They can send you a quote or um, it's all based on the number of students that you have. We do offer bulk pricing um, and we offer bulk price discounts um, for K-12 as well. So uh, we can definitely talk to your rep about that and uh, they can get you a, a price or cost. And the maximum price is $49.99 and that's for one full year of access. Um, we sell direct to students. Um, high school has a different pricing tier, but that's kind of like our rack rate. Um, mm -hmm. That includes access for one full year to Visible Body Courseware, plus all of the apps and, and that are included, as well as the mobile downloads. Um, with the mobile downloads, A&P, Physiology and Pathology, these are permanent apps. And so as long as the student has that device, that will never expire. Visible Body Suite, which is our great big huge powerhouse of information, the whole time that they have access to Visible Body, they will be continuing to get ongoing updates and up to the minute information. We are always updating our content. Most recently we added in this new feature here where you have the ability to layer in muscles by layer. Um, you have the ability to um, do a lot of different things. So we're always making updates, those microanatomy models that uh, Desiree showed you that are brand new, those update automatically with an active visible body subscription. So um, 
Thank you so much. Um, oh, great. Dr. Williams has 51 licenses in place and waiting for the delivery of the devices. That's exciting. And then you'll be able to connect with your customer engagement specialist to get trained. We'll train individual instructors. We'll train as a group. We'll do follow-up meetings. The other thing too is um, we will follow up with you. Your For those of you that attended today, your rep will be in touch with you. So you will have um, proactive outreach from our team to make sure that we can help you take the next step in your purchases visible body. So Desiree, I'll let you go ahead and close it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so great. Thank you, Mary, for jumping in. Um, does anybody have any final questions? Awesome. So yeah, so just to recap um, what, we, what we went over today. So um, we have lots of different content that you can use. Everything's customizable, very easy to, um, condense the information for students. We're available on multiple devices. Um, we have a great CE team and uh, customizable courses that we can create for you or that you can create from scratch. And then we have ongoing training um, for you. So if you're new to the teaching game, don't worry, we're here to help. Um, and if you are a veteran, um, hopefully you'll find that this makes your life a lot easier and your students' grades better. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you everyone. Thank you, Courtney, for helping. And thank you, Mary, for, for joining. It's been a pleasure.